Antoine Augustin Paramatier loved potatoes. I mean, he really loved potatoes. At one point, he had no choice, but after this mandatory relationship had ended, he still continued to sing the praises of the almighty root fruit. Antoine is remembered as a vocal promoter of the potato as a food source for humans in France and throughout Europe. So you're probably thinking, why does someone who loves potatoes deserve a tell me more story? Big whoop, I can do that. I love potatoes. I didn't know that I just needed to tell everyone and then I'll become legendary in the culinary world. So why are we actually talking about this guy in particular? What makes him very interesting is that at the time Antoine was alive, the cultivation of potatoes was actually illegal in France. During the Seven Years' War, Antoine was serving as an army pharmacist for France and was eventually captured by the Prussians. In Prussian prison, he was faced with eating potatoes, known only to the French as hog feed. Now, to be honest, after reading about this more, we had to find out why no one in France, which is the culinary capital of the current world, was eating potatoes. So very quickly, here's the dirt on it. It's a potato joke with the dirt, okay. The potato had been introduced from South America to Europe by the Spaniards at the beginning of the 16th century. It was introduced to the rest of Europe by 1640, but outside of Spain and Ireland was actually used only for animal feed. In Prussia, where our boy Antoine is still in prison, King Frederick II required peasants to cultivate the plants under severe penalties. The Prussian king would even provide them with cuttings. In 1748, the French parliament actually forbid the cultivation of the potato on the grounds that it was thought to cause leprosy, among other things. This law remained on the books in Antoine's time until with his help would later be reversed. After the war ended in 1763, he returned to Paris and pursued his pioneering studies in nutritional chemistry. His prison experience came in handy in 1772 when he proposed the use of the potato as a source of food for malnourished patients. He won a prestigious French academic prize on behalf of the potato in 1773. Due largely to Paramatier's efforts, the Paris Faculty of Medicine declared potatoes edible again in 1772. Still, resistance continued and Antoine was prevented from using his test garden at the hospital where he worked as a pharmacist. The group holding Antoine back was the religious community at the time that owned the land. Their complaints resulted in the removal of Paramatier's position at the hospital. After this, Antoine's mission would not be derailed. He then began a series of publicity stunts for which he remains notable today. He hosted dinners at which potato dishes were featured prominently and guests included Benjamin Franklin. Antoine once gave a bouquet of potato blossoms to the king and queen of France. One of my favorite stories is of him surrounding his potato patch with armed guards during the day to suggest valuable goods and would withdraw them at night so people could steal the potatoes. He instructed them to let anyone steal them any time during the day and to take any bribe, big or small. In 1771, Paramatier won an essay contest in which all the judges voted the potato as the best substitute for regular flour. This was before a time France needed a replacement for wheat, so Antoine continued to face criticism and lack of acknowledgement for his work. The first step in getting French society to accept the potato was a year of bad harvest in 1785, when the scorned potato staved off famine in the north of France. In 1789, Paramatier published work on the culture and use of the potato, sweet potato, and Jerusalem artichoke. It was, quote, printed by order of the king, giving royal backing to potato eating. The problem was this work was published the day before the start of the French Revolution. Five years later, potatoes would actually become accepted as food for the revolutionaries. In 1795, massive plots of potatoes were grown to feed rebels as they fought against the French monarchy. Paramatier's culinary interests covered a wide range of opportunities to help the current generations through technical improvements. He published his observations touching on bread baking, cheese making, grain storage, and use of cornmeal, chestnut flour, mushroom culture, mineral waters, wine making. He improved sea biscuits and a host of other topics. In 1779, Paramatier was appointed to teach at the Free School of Bakery to help stabilize Paris's food supply by making bread in a more cost-efficient fashion. That same year, he published a recipe in which he described how one can make potato bread that still has all the characteristics of wheat bread. His many other contributions to nutrition and health included establishing the first mandatory smallpox vaccination campaign. Antoine was appointed as Inspector General of Health Services by Napoleon and would later convince Napoleon to mandate the vaccine in 1805. He then perfected the process of extracting sugar from beets. Paramatier founded a school of bread making and studied methods of conserving food, including refrigeration. Any dish whose name includes the description Paramatier will contain potatoes as a major ingredient. The popular dish hashish Paramatier is very similar to cottage or shepherd's pie, consisting typically of a mixture of skinless mashed potatoes with finely ground meat. Now before I totally derail the story and convert Tell Me More into a cooking channel, there's one more dish that deserves recognition because it is indeed amazing. It's called potage paramatier and it's a leek and potato soup which has been pureed. Some historians claim that any dish containing potatoes can be named paramatier, but even many classic French potato dishes do not. Paramatier died on December 13th, 1813 at age 76. He is buried in Paris in a plot ringed by potato plants. 
He has a street named after him in Paris and also a metro station. There are a few statues of Antoine in France. This one shows him standing above a couple of grateful peasants while handing them potato seeds. So there you have it. Antoine was an interesting guy. He went to prison, was forced to eat potatoes, realized most of Europe was wrong, comes back to France, spends the rest of his life convincing everyone that potatoes will not make your fingers fall off. He of course went on to revolutionize many other food and nutritional related processes, and is now a legendary potato figure. It goes to show you that if you play your cards right, you too can have people put potatoes on your grave long after you are gone. I'll leave you with this fair use vintage Mr. Potato Head commercial. Potatoes not included, important to note for that $2 price tag. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. If there's something that we missed or you have an idea for a future story, drop us a comment. And as always, thank you for listening.